Hey, what is up everyone? It is Rich. All right, welcome to a new video. Today, on Beyond the Page, we're gonna look at a page from Batman Death Blow, pencils by Lee Bermejo and inks by me. Um, I had mentioned in yesterday's video that I, I scanned about 150 pages of art and some of it I've been sitting on for a long time and this is the last Lee Bermejo page that I have that I inked. Um, I was brought in to help Tim Bradstreet ink um, just a few pages, somewhere between maybe six and ten pages in the second issue of Batman Death Blow. Uh, I did one sequence. Um, I think I'm pretty sure that this was sort of the gist of it was um, death blow kind of on the streets but we're going to take a good look at this i'll talk a little bit about the techniques that i used um the insane amount of detail that lay, lee puts into uh, his pages I, I combined lee and page and went lage um but uh yeah lee is really really good and honestly it's just gotten better and better and um you know he even moved beyond this where he does a lot of like uh, gray on his pieces of art um but yeah, this this style of penciling to me has always really been um, just crazy to look at. I remember seeing John Paul Leon, Tommy Lee Edwards, um, Alex Maleev to some extent. Um, you know, uh, it's a very shape based rendering, and uh, man, it looks cool. But it can get away from you if you don't if you don't really understand kind of what you're suggesting all these little you know different triangular shapes and triangles with rectangles and stuff like that um you know you put too many in in the wrong spot and you're gonna you're gonna have some issues but lee really really understands um what he's up to some i mean lee had a lot of different influences and i'm sure he still does um i i know that he was a big phil hale fan i mean it's exciting what you know honestly doing these beyond the page beyond the page videos uh even for myself is actually um it's it's exciting to look at the art because it reminds me of the time uh and not not so much my experience working on it but like thinking of lee when he was um learning you know i mean obviously as artists we constantly are learning and throughout our careers we learn and acquire more information and you refine things and you get a level of uh skill with things but um uh, th thinking of phil hale just reminded me of such a fun time of um just drawing and learning about art and being excited about art and stuff like that and whenever you can tap into those emotions and those kind of experiences um it's it's like a it's like a hidden gas tank that you have that you can kind of tap into and it will give you a little bit of momentum and uh sometimes in times when when you uh uh, don't have it as much or or um you know you feel a little beat down I, I, you know i do a lot of reviews and lessons for patreon um and i will plug it and say that if you haven't gone to my patreon definitely check it out uh probably six to seven hundred and fifty videos up um inking penciling anatomy figure drawing perspective i cover it all i'm constantly acquiring new information last night i was watching all kinds of stuff. I did several hours of Adam Hughes interviews. I was listening to, well, watching uh, Scott Robertson, um, how to draw motorcycles and planes. I mean, I'm constantly plugging in new information into my skill set because I'm uh, what you might call a life learner. <laughs> no, I just I like I like I like knowing how stuff is done. Um, but you know, honestly, the thing is, is you learn it so you don't have to think about it. It really is honest to God the truth. There's, there's, uh, uh, there's like stages, I think, of learning. It's like, you know, you have the unfamiliarity with something, you become more familiar with it, and then it just becomes like a natural thing. Like, you don't think about when you form a sentence that you need, you know, a noun and a verb and, you know, all this different stuff. And, and, uh, the same goes for art. I mean, it ultimately becomes a language. And, um, that is just how it goes. But anyway, so, um, He's got these like signs up here, and it's kind of cool. The, the, you you would get dinged for this stuff now, maybe a little bit more, but obviously there's the Shepherd Fairy kind of thing here. Um, this is a reference to Danielle Zagil, who's a fantastic uh, artist in his own right, um, and and high, highly graphic too. I absolutely love the shot of death 
blow. I just think his face looks so freaking cool. Uh, and Lee really, really does a great tough guy head. I mean, it's it's kind of stating the obvious at this point. But I remember when he really started to get it down. And, and it was like his profiles in particular. Man, they're just kick-ass. It's interesting to see. He pulls the chin out a little farther than I do. Um, uh, and man, he's got some really, really cool planes. Let me grab my stylus really quick. I'll point out some stuff. But you know, it, and and this is the thing too is is if you're working on your own stuff a lot, you 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 are able to look at something like this and really really quickly differentiate how Lee did it and you do it. Like if you don't indicate these creases in the face when you draw faces, you're immediately going to see it. If you put your eye back here instead of where Lee places his, because just aesthetically you think it looks better. Um, you're going to pick up on that, the shape of the nose. Maybe you don't um, make your tough guy nose as um, sort of carved out as his. And again, the, the chin shape, you know, maybe yours is more... Um, why does that keep... Okay, that was really weird. You know, for me, I, I make my tough guy chin a little bit more like this. But I actually like how much he pulls his out. So who knows? Maybe when I'm drawing next time, I'll try it a little further out and see if, if uh, that adds any sort of pizzazz to my thing. You know, the ears, the hair. I mean, you know, people are always, always trying to learn to draw hair better. And here's a very, very interesting approach to it that's very almost surreal in places. But, but he gets enough of the shapes that you want to see in there, you know. He, he indicates like that there's light coming from the top and there's um, light here. Because remember, this is a three-dimensional thing. I, I don't want to get too much into like an art lesson here, but this is the top of the head. This plane starts to curve down, but this probably protrudes the most on your head because of the shape of your cranium. And so this catches light. You know, these are little pieces of hair that are sticking out more. That's why they're lighter. Um, people get so confused by this, but if you understand the actual sort of terrain that you're drawing, it makes it much easier, but it's also easier said than done. Um, you know, again, something like this is very, very difficult. I remember, I remember my first experience of trying to emulate something like this was right when I first started collecting comics, but Mark Silvestri had drawn, um, Cyblade, I think is her name. Uh, she had pants and he had done something along the lines of this and I, I remember looking at it and just going like they look like folds but man that's a lot of shapes like in, in you trying to mimic something like this like do a copy of it uh, you're really not going to hit the forms that the artist is showing you you would be better off if you really understood it as finding the bigger areas of interest uh, but again, it's very, very difficult to do um, when you're learning. So what I recommend to people, if you're trying to learn to draw folds, is look at a, a photograph of like a jacket and pick like three main folds that are the most noticeable and start to memorize these bigger shapes, like something along the lines of this or that maybe there's something like this going on or, you know, maybe you get like um, some sort of a crease here, um, you know, could wrap around more. But if you can pick up a few simple key shapes you're on your way and then you can keep adding like more detail to it this is always i always found this woman very interesting it's a really cool shot he's got you can feel the perspective that they're walking on you know it's, it's really really nicely done then it kind of flattens the camera out a little bit and you get a little bit more like where they're at your eye level. Um, and this is even kind of subtle. It's like we're, I guess we're, we're, I almost feel like we're slightly above and below it. It's kind of an interesting thing, but this is almost giving me a little bit of like a fisheye kind of vibe. Just a little, I, I, it's real subtle, but it, it feels a little like that to me. But anyway, but um, yeah. You know, it's and it's a very nicely designed page. As as much detail is on it, I mean, it does actually read quite clear. There's pretty good, um, what would you call it, like um, directing, meaning that that like he he keeps things based on the shape and position of things that he puts in his panels, um, moving your eye the way that he wants you to see it, and. Uh, really like this is great 
But again, like, look at this face. It's like a little tiny head. All these cool shapes. Lee was also a big Kevin Nolan fan. Um, I, I'm sure that... I, I know that Lee likes Frank Miller, but I, I don't remember him being, like, super, super crazy on... Um, like studying Frank, but maybe at home he did more or something like that. But, uh, you know, he had other influences. I think they got him to the same sort of thing. That's really cool, too. So, anyway, and then I noticed one thing. Do you want me to point it out to you? I missed one black on this piece. This seems to be an ongoing trend now, but ready? Do you want to see it? It's right here on his jacket. You see that? You know what I get? I get an F. F for this page. There's a lot of shapes in here. But, it, you know, it, it's funny. Is I, I, it's The last two pieces had little blacks that were missed. But I, I would say, honestly, um, if I've done 3,000 pages in my career, I, I would say I've probably missed 25 blacks all total. It's really, really a low number. I mean, I very rarely will catch... A page after the fact that I've done it, but it does it does happen. Um, with Lee stuff, I mean, I'll point this out, and then I can wrap up this video. Uh, a lot of times, I would actually ink a lot of the, well. Hmm, that's not. I don't know if that's actually accurate. I was gonna say that that sometimes because when you erase a page, uh, the black will fade. I'll, I'll fill in a lot of the black areas at the end, and again, you know, you kind of outline them and put X's and then you erase the page and then you go in and fill it. And the nice thing is, is because you're not erasing the page again, uh, your black will lay down a little bit more. But I kind of remember inking this stuff a little more. There were so many blacks and shapes like that. I, I want to say that I, I might have inked full things, meaning that I went in and inked this and then um, filled in the blacks as I was doing it. But some of these areas maybe not this is really really nuts and in particular if you did outline everything and then went in at the end i actually think it would look kind of weird and probably a little um off but uh, i i overall i was actually pretty proud of this work it was nothing that i had ever really done before in terms of a style and uh you know i mean it's very different than what i did on chris bocklow it was very different than what i did on j scott campbell it's very different than what i did on Laniel Yu. I mean, you could go down the list and um you know, I've been able to acclimate to a lot of different styles, but I think one of the reasons is that I've never really concerned myself with style. So, um, in terms of like when I when I pencil, ink, whatever, um, I, I really, really just focus on the task at hand and just use whatever skills I have to sort of solve what I'm seeing going on or whatever the goal is for the piece. Um, and I'm not so hung up on um, some certain thing that I do or, or that I've learned. Um, cause you can surprise yourself, you know, we joke and we call it like a toolbox, but you know, in a toolbox, you might have tiers of cool shit that you do, you know, as you open it, it's like, there's, there's a tool in here that maybe you haven't used in a long time, but you learned it. Or maybe when you were initially learning a pencil you know you were a fan of something for the summer that kind of <laughs> came and went but you'd be surprised what you can recall and pull out so anyway all right have a great day this page is available for sale on comic art fans um you know i, I scanned a lot of stuff so i probably a lot of the the high res scans again i'm going to be showing on this show are things that are for sale so um you know, you can check it out and uh, see what you think. Uh, I will say this, though, that this price is probably not accurate of what the sale is. Uh, that was priced probably 10 or 15 years ago, and this stuff has gone up in value. So um, anyway, but all right, have a great day. I'll talk to you later. Bye.